With each passing year, the history and tradition of Ohio football gets richer and richer. I'm Russ Eisenstein, the voice of the Bobcats. Welcome to the second floor of the Peden Stadium Tower. This is the trophy case, and it's packed to the brim because the Bobcats have won a lot in the Frank Solich era. This is another seven-win campaign, and the Bobcats have had five of those in a row now. It's a streak that's only equaled by two other teams currently in the Mid-American Conference, Northern Illinois and Toledo. We're bowl bound again for the fifth straight season. That's only happened twice in the history of the MAC. Marshall when they were in the league and Northern Illinois currently. We're heading down to St. Petersburg for the Beef O'Brady's Bowl as the Bobcats play the Pirates of East Carolina. Before we fly down to Florida, let's take a look back at the Bobcats in bowls from the Sun Bowl to the Sunshine State. Ohio's eighth bowl appearance comes in the Sunshine State. The first one was in the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas in 1962. The Bobcats battled the Buffaloes of West Texas State. Legendary head coach Bill Hess guided the Cats to an 8-2 regular season, where the opponents only scored 97 points in those 10 games. There were three shutouts. It was a low-scoring affair in the bowl of two. Ohio was up 14-7, but a late Buffalo touchdown and two-point conversion gave them the win, 15-14 the final. Six years later, Ohio made its second bowl after its second MAC championship in the decade. The Tangerine Bowl was in Orlando, some 100 miles northeast of St. Petersburg, where the 2013 Bobcats will play East Carolina. The 68 team had a high-powered offense, and the game with Richmond was high scoring too. Star quarterback Cleve Bryant threw four touchdown passes. Three were to Todd Snyder. Ohio led first 7 0, tied the game at 28, but fell 49 42. The loss took nothing away from one of the best seasons in school history. Bryant was inducted into the Citrus Bowl Hall of Fame in 1968. 2006 was a special season. It was Frank Solich's second in Athens. The nine-win campaign included a victory at Illinois, a seven-game winning streak at the end of the regular season, and the MAC East title. Despite a loss to Central Michigan to the MAC title game, the GMAC Bowl in Mobile was a fitting reward that Bobcat fans waited for for years. Ohio did lose to Southern Miss 28-7, but being there was validation of the thought that Bobcat football could play on the national stage and raised expectations for the future. In 2009, the Bobcats won the East Division title again with a nine-win campaign, and Ohio was never out of the four losses leading up to a Motor City matchup with Marshall in the Little Caesars Bowl. Just like they did all season, the Cats played hard. They were down 21-0, but a Shannon Ballard 75-yard fumble return for a score gave them momentum into halftime. Ohio scored the final 17 points of the game, shut out Marshall in the second half, but lost 21-17. Still, the program clearly was on an upward climb that continued in 2010. It was an eight-win season, and Ohio was in the division hunt until the final week. The Bobcats represented the league against the Sun Belt's Troy Trojans in the New Orleans Bowl. It was a watershed moment. The 48-21 loss in the Superdome helped change how the Cats did things. Solich and his staff knew they could incorporate many of the elements of Troy's up-tempo offense into Ohio's game plan moving forward they did. To this day, it's a game that's referred to as a turning point. 2011 was a landmark historic campaign. Ohio had another nine-win regular season, captured another division title, and lost a thriller to Northern Illinois in the championship game. So they took off for the Treasure Valley of Idaho in search of bold treasure in Boise in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl against Utah State. Down 9-0, Tyler Tettleton found Derek Roback and the Cats were on the board, down 9-7, which was the halftime score. Trailing 23-10, the Oklahoma kid found current Indianapolis Colt LeVon Brazil. Ohio trails by 13, and it's an option right. Tyler pulls it back, has lots of time to throw. Throws it for LeVon Brazil, and he leaps, and he made the catch! Touchdown, Cats! Oh, what a big-time play! 23-16, you give Tyler that much time, and you give LeVon that much room, they're gonna hook up every time. Connection was money all year and was on that play for 44 yards and a score, and Ohio was down by six. The defense was huge in the fourth quarter. It set up a drive for the Bobcat ages. Tettleton found Riley Dunlop to get across midfield. 
Is this going to be a historic drive? First and 10 ball at the Ohio 38. Tettleton has time. Zings it over the middle. It is caught. It's a first down. It's Riley Dunlop inside Utah State territory. Tettleton picked up another first down. Then on fourth down, he withstood a big rush and floated it to Brazil near the goal line. 45 seconds left. Fourth down and six. Ball at the Utah State 14. Four wide receivers left and a wide out to the right. Big rush on. Tyler has time. Floats it over the middle of the field. It's caught. LeVar Brazil leads for the end zone. Did he get in? The play was reviewed. No touchdown. But then Tettleton struck for the biggest score in Bobcat history. He takes a snap. Low snap. Pulls it back. Rolls over to the right side. On the run to the end zone. Dies. Touchdown, Cats. Touchdown, Cats. 13 seconds left. And Ohio just tied the game. Now for the most important extra point in Ohio University football history. We're tied at 23. Snap back, placement down, kick through, and it is good! Ohio leads 24 to 23. Finally, Ohio had done it. The first bowl win, 24-23 over Utah State. With that winning bowl experience and a 7-0 start to the season, complete with a win over Penn State and national rankings to fall back on, Ohio recaptured their winning brand of football in the 2012 Independence Bowl against Louisiana Monroe. The Cats started off fast and never looked back. Cats trying to take the lead. Tettleton out of the pistol. Play action, rolls the pocket left, throws to Foster, wide open, six for the Cats, and how about that start to this ball game? 12.04 to go, quarter one. Ohio's 4.05, boys hook up again. Tettleton to Dante Foster, six nothing Cats. They scored two touchdowns in the first seven minutes and rolled to a 45-14 win. Back to pass is Tyler, four-man rush, lobs the ball deep down the near side, it's caught, Cochran back in the D, on the run, 20, 15, 10, 5, 6 for the Cats, and how about this start to the Independence Bowl? Third down and goal up to two, Tyler takes a snap, handoff ball, runs into the end zone, touchdown Cats! The Cats rolled it to a 45-14 win, they outgained the Warhawks 5-56-3-14, the 31-point margin of victory, the total yards, and Bo Blankenship's four touchdowns were all Independence Bowl records. It was a Bobcat blowout way to go back-to-back -back in bowls. So now the Bobcats add another page to their bowl book, and we'll be there to cover it for you. Our radio network coverage starts with Beef O'Brady's Bowl Live on the Ohio IMG Sports Network the night before the contest from Tropicana Field from 6 o'clock until 7 on many of our radio network stations. Then on game day, we have a one-hour pregame show. It starts at 1 with the kick at 2. It's also on ESPN. And never fear, Bobcat TV is here for you to document it all. Enjoy it. Another trip to a bowl. Ohio and East Carolina in the Beef O'Brady's Bowl on December the 23rd in St. Petersburg, Florida. For Tanner Smith, I'm Russ Eisenstein. This is Bobcat TV.